For this project, you'll need your cutting diagram, a tape measure or a ruler, or both, some wood glue, sandpaper, pencil and maybe a marker, some galvanized nails, a drill, a handsaw, a hammer, then you'll need a paddle bit, or uh, sometimes they're called a spade bit, at one and a quarter. You might want one of these, a um, Phillips head um, screwdriver bit for this, the one screw that we put in, and then a drill bit to fit your nails. So whatever nails you buy, you'll want to get a drill bit just slightly smaller for your pilot holes. And then a five or six foot cedar fence board, one by six. Cutting out the board. So we're going to look at this chart, this cutting chart, and we're going to start from the left hand side and make our measurements, our marks, um, going from left to right, just because that's how the example goes. So let's start marking our lines. Take our tape measure, make a mark at four inches. Make one near the top and near the bottom. And then take your straight edge of some kind. You might want to use a ruler for the whole thing instead of a tape measure. And mark that line. Just so it shows up better in the video, I'm going to use a marker, but normally I would just use a pencil. And then we'll continue on from there. So right away we're going to encounter this slightly unusual situation with these angles. So using this diagram from this point, the four inches to the next point, that's 9.25. So let's, that's nine and a quarter inches. So we'll make a mark there. But if you look down at the bottom, it's 10 and a quarter inches. And that's because we want to create our angle. So let's make the bottom mark at 10 and a quarter. So then you have this line, make sure it goes all the way to, out to the edge, and this line, and then you are going to draw your line across there. And now you've created your the, the side and you'll be able to have a slanting roof this way. See, the opposite thing happens here. You've got the 10.25 at the top, 9.25 at the bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and make the rest of the marks that will all just be straight. So we're going to do one at 9.25, one at 7.5, and one at 15. So here's our board all marked out. Now we're ready to cut. Done. Now that we have those cut, we can label them if we'd like to, so we don't get confused when building. Um, it's pretty straightforward and the plan um, has that all laid out for you, so that's optional. Before building, I'm just going to sand off some of those rough edges where I made my cut and just get it smooth a little bit on all the sides. Before I build, I'm going to cut the hole in the front of the birdhouse. So I decided to make it two and a half inches down. And then my wood, although it's supposed to be five and a half inches wide, usually they are. One by sixes are usually five and a half wide. This one's been laying around my backyard for years. So it seems kind of shrunk. Uh, it has shrank. So <laughs> I'm going to make so the middle mark is going to be on my piece of wood about two and five eighths 
if you had five and a half, if you had the full width, then two and three quarters. So basically you're finding the center and coming down about two and a half to three inches to make that hole. So what you need is, I'm going to make this hole one and a quarter inches uh, across because that will let the birds in that I want to let in and not the ones that I don't want to let in. And this one has cut a lot of bird house holes so it's going to be kind of slow going but you'll want to put your plank on top of another piece of wood so you don't drill into your table and just use that point to start the hole. My bit is really dull, so what I'm having to do is kind of put all my weight behind it and rock it back and forth as I cut through. Okay, after lots of stress, um, I got the hole cut, and now I'm going to take some sandpaper and smooth all of those rough parts down so the birds don't get injured while they're going through the hole. So I'll work on that a little bit more. This is fine, and now let's proceed with the rest of the building. Okay, now I'm going to drill some holes. I, I really like to always pre-drill because then splitting is not an issue. So the front of the birdhouse is going to be nailed to the side. So the holes you're gonna to wanna to pre-drill are going to be in the face. So in order to get your holes in the right place, you can use a piece of wood to just kind of draw yourself a guideline. So there's my guideline. That's just showing me how wide the piece of wood is that I'm nailing into. So I'm just going to make myself three marks about centered on that span and then I'll pre-drill some holes. This is a great size of nail for these little birdhouses. This is almost too big, but I'm not going to drill all the way through. I'm just going to drill through this piece of wood. And so it will still have plenty of wood to grab on when I nail it. So I'm just gonna take my scrap here and make three holes, nothing fancy. You'll need three holes on one side and just one hole at the top on the other. Um, and that's because you're gonna want the side to be able to pivot out so that you can clean the birdhouse. So let's proceed. Okay, so now we're going to put a little bit of glue on the short side. So here's the side of the birdhouse. Put a little glue right along here. Okay, now that we have that glue on, we're going to take the front and lay that along there. Make sure you've got it lined up here and here and then grab a nail the holes also help you just get started especially for this part here where you probably don't have anyone to help you hold it together while you hammer go ahead and put the other ones in as well this is probably the hardest part just holding it together while you get those first three nails in probably have some glue come out like that. Okay, next we're going to put the bottom in. You'd think you'd want to put this side on next, but because it pivots, you'll need to do the bottom. So here's the front, and the bottom is going to fit in like this with a, a, this, this piece of wood overhanging this much because this, the other side has to fit in there. So make sure you put the bottom in this way. We're gonna drill a few holes to hold the bottom in. Okay, so let's glue the bottom in and, and nail it. Put a little glue. And then turn it over. Still getting it lined up there in that corner and get a nail started. Now we'll put the back on. So the back can be positioned 
however you like it. I decided to have a little bit more sticking up at the top to attach it to a fence or wherever I end up putting it. And a little at the bottom too as well. So I could put two, two points of attachment to whatever I'm hanging it on. And I went ahead and drilled the hole. I just positioned it so I could see down into this piece. And then I drilled a hole center right over that. So that's how that worked. Okay, next, we're almost, we're getting there. Next, we're gonna put the, the last side on, and this one is only, only going to get a nail here and here. And then we'll probably just put a screw right here so that this side can pivot out and the birdhouse can be cleaned at the end of the season, which is an important part of having birdhouses. So I already had the hole drilled in the front, so I'm just going to drill a hole about right here so it's e even with the other hole, so it pivots evenly. You could also measure up from the bottom and that would make, make sure that it pivots nicely. So you would just take a ruler and get this measurement. So that's eight and a quarter where I put that hole. And then go from the bottom of the side there. So eight and a quarter and that was almost exact, but let's get it perfect. Okay, so that's where I'll put my hole right about there. All right. Okay, so now we've got that side on and this is the way it opens. You just pry it up like that. And then if a bird makes a nest in it, you can pop that up and take out the old nest. You probably wanna wear gloves or wash your hands carefully afterwards. And you just want to do that at the end of the season so it's nice and clean for the next year. Last thing we want to do on this side is drill a hole. And then we can just put a little screw in there to keep it closed. Okay, now let's start on the roof. Okay, so you, you set the roof on there. So just put three spots for your nails and drill the holes. I went ahead and added glue on those two sides, but remember you're not going to put any nails or glue on this side. We've got one last nail to put in and this birdhouse will be pretty much done. A very, very rustic one board birdhouse. One last thing you want to do if you have a, a drill bit that's maybe a quarter inch, put some holes in the bottom. That will let the any water that might get in there drain out. Here's a few birdhouses around my small backyard. This one had a family of Buick's friends in it about four years ago. This one was made at a program by a patron and they never picked it up, so I hung it up in a tree to see if anybody would like this location. So far, there have been no takers. Here's a funny one I made out of clay and it hasn't had any interest either. <laughs> Maybe it's a little too strange. This birdhouse that had the family of chestnut-back chickadees in it last year turned out to be a great place because it got the morning sun, it was protected from the rain by the overhang of the shed, and then there was a branch right over here that the chickadees would land on before they would bring food to the babies. Here's where I hung the rustic birdhouse. We'll see if we get any guests this spring. <laughs>